in this video and the next few videos I'm going to be talking about a new way of constructing topologies called the quotient construction it gives the quotient topology and this is intended to formalize things like this picture which we've seen a few times where you take a square and you identify the sides in opposite pairs so what does that mean mathematically well the square is a set of points in the plane and the identifications identifying opposite pairs of points is the same as giving an equivalence relation on that set so we're given a space x with a topology and an equivalence relation called tilde on x so in this particular example the equivalence classes are for example this point and this point <coughs> are in the same equivalence class or this point and this point are in the same equivalence class the four vertices which I'll draw in red <coughs> they form an equivalence class they all get identified with one another when we glue the sides up and the interior points of the square each interior point forms an equivalent class of its own so given a space and equivalence relation the quotient space or the quotient set in other words, the set of equivalence classes inherits a topology. And what is that topology? Well, um, let this Q denote the map that sends a point in X to its equivalence class in the quotient then the quotient topology is defined to be the most refined topology on X mod tilde such that this map is continuous so the quotient topology finest topology in other words the one with the most open sets for which Q is continuous so Q is called the quotient map so the point is if, if I give you too many open sets here eventually the pre-image of one of them under the quotient map is something in X that's not an open set so you can't add as many open sets as you like there's kind of a maximum number of open sets you can put on the quotient and the quotient topology is the one with the most open sets for which this map is continuous um, more more uh, explicitly a set uh, u inside the quotient so a collection of equivalence classes is open in the quotient topology if and only if um, q inverse of u is open in x okay, so these are exactly the sets you would need to be open in order for this map q to be continuous you can't add any more sets in without Q being discontinuous so we need to check that this is actually a topology right that this um, this thing I've described here is a topology so um, 
First, is the op the empty set open? Right, if I take the empty set of equivalence classes, what's its pre-image under the quotient map? Well, it's the empty set. And that's open in X because the empty set is always open in a topological space. So the empty set is open as Q inverse of the empty set is the empty set, which is open in X. Great. Uh, what about the whole space? Well, if I take all the equivalence classes and look at the pre-image under the quotient map, I just get all the points. And that's open in X. So is open as Q inverse of X over tilde equals X, which is open in X. Same argument. Um, OK, what about unions? Well, the pre-image of a union is the union of the pre-images so by definition if we're taking a pre-image of a union of open sets then the pre-images of those open sets are open so if we're taking a union of open sets in X um, so this is open So um, the topology, the quotient topology satisfies the property that unions of open sets are open. And finally, intersections, that's the same. I, the pre-image of an intersection is the intersection of pre-images. so that's open as well. Okay, so this is a topology. It's a bit of a weird looking definition if you've never seen it before. Um, so what I want to do is work through a bunch of examples and see that the topology you get on the quotient, it has the kind of properties you would expect it to have. So first of all, Let's take a, the example of the interval, the closed interval 0, 1, modulo the equivalence relation, which has as equivalence classes just singleton points except 0 and 1 form an equivalence class. So the equivalence classes are the set 0, 1 and the set x for any x in the open interval. So these are the equivalence classes. For our equivalence relation, which I'll just call tilde. So the question is, what is uh, 0, 1 over the equivalence relation as a topological space? And you should be able to guess the answer. It's a circle. Because what am I doing when I form this quotient? I'm gluing this red point to this red point. So I'm gluing the ends of the interval back together and I get a circle. So let's see what the open sets look like. Well, let's draw our interval and our circle and the quotient map. And let's suppose that the endpoints of the interval, these red points, map to this red point in the circle. Um, what happens if I take uh, an interval like this sitting on the circle, you know, an arc of the circle? And suppose the arc is away from the red point. What's its pre-image? Its pre-image is going to be some interval in the bigger interval from 0 to 1, like this one. And we see that the, the blue interval on the right is open in the quotient topology, if and only if its pre-image 
this blue interval on the left is open in the real line, so that means if it's an open interval. And that's good because we know that the open intervals inside the circle are obtained by intersecting the circle with a, a disk in the ambient Euclidean space, so that means it's also open in the subspace topology, which is what we expect. What about an interval that goes through the red point, like this one? What's its pre-image? Well, its pre-image is going to be two intervals, one at this end and one at this end. And again, that's open if and only if it's open here and it's open here. So that's what the open intervals that go through the red bit look like. And that makes sense, right? Because again, in the subspace topology on the circle, we can draw a disk that intersects such an interval um, yeah, to make an, an open-ended interval at either end. So the quotient topology is making formal this intuitive idea we have that when you walk off the end of this interval, you come back at the other end and continue moving. That's what the quotient topology is doing for us. So let's see that in this other example that we had up here for the, for the square. Start a new page. OK, so for the square, we make identifications of the opposite sides. That's our equivalence relation. And the quotient, that's what we call the square S, the quotient um, S modulo tilde is, I claim, the torus. So let me draw on the curves that you get by identifying those edges with arrows. Now, intuitively, you know, if you're walking off this end of the square, you come back on this end and so forth. And um, so how how are we going to how are we going to see what's going on with these open sets? Let's let's take an open set um, like this one. OK, that disk around that point, what's its pre-image? under the quotient map? Well, it's a collection of four quarter disks and they're open where they uh, where they have these green edges. Uh, so that's an open set. So that tells us that this guy, this green guy downstairs, is an open set, which is what you want. Um, I want to now draw something that's not an open set, um, the torus and check that its pre-image is not an open set. Because you might think to yourself, well, you know, what happens if I throw away three of these guys? I still have an open set up here. So I could just take a quarter of this and make it closed along the edges, and that would be an open set. But you'll be wrong, right? That's definitely not going to be open in the torus if it's closed along two boundaries and open along this boundary. That definitely shouldn't be an open set in the torus. So let's see why the quotient topology tells us that that's not an open set. What is its pre-image? Well, true, its pre-image contains this corner, which is open. But its pre-image also contains this bit over here, this small segment of this edge, because these points are identified with these ones under the quotient. And similarly, uh, because of these points over here getting identified with these points down here, the pre-image contains this. And also because the pre-image uh, contains this point and this point is identified with all the other vertices, the pre-image also contains that point there. So if I call this set um, V, what I'm drawing over here is Q inverse of V. And you can really see Q inverse of V is very far from being open because it's got these three random closed subsets attached. So um, that means that V is not open. What 
as the previous example. You was open. Okay, another example along the same lines um, is if I take, let's say, an eight gon, an octagon. And I identify opposite sides, well, not opposite sides, no. I identify sides in the following way. Um, I'm going to change colors. I'll just use the same number of arrows. Okay, so blue single arrow gets identified with blue single arrow. Black double arrow gets identified with black double arrow, etc. I claim if you make these identifications to this octagon, what you get is this guy. The genus 2 circus. So this is the quotient space of the octagon by the circumference relation tilde. Uh, that may look a bit strange first time you see it. Um, but if you look, this edge and this edge, this edge and this edge, if you kind of slice the octagon in half like that, these look a lot like the identifications that you do for the torus, except you kind of cut out a, a punctured this, this point here. And the same with the blue guy. So it's like you're taking a torus, puncturing it to get this, doing the same for some other torus and then gluing them together. That's why you get a genus two circus. And in general, if you take a four G gon with four G edges, what you get is a genus G circus. Circus with G holes. Okay, another example of a quotient space. If I give you any space x and any subset a, you can define an equivalence relation whose equivalence classes A, so the whole subset A is an equivalence class, and things of the form x on its own, little x on its own, um, for points x that are not an A. So this is a lot like where we had the circle, and A was the two endpoints of the interval that we were gluing together to get the circle. So we can form the quotient um, x over tilde, but it's usually written x over a, because it's like we're dividing out or crushing a to a point. Um, and this is a useful construction. So um, here are some examples of this. Let me start a new page. If I take, for example, a disk as my x, let's say D2, the two dimensional disk, and the set A is going to be the boundary. I'm going to draw in red. All right, the boundary of the disk. Then x over A is the sphere. Why is that? All the points in red are getting identified down to one point. So it's like I'm wrapping this disk over a sphere. 
and they all all those red points get identified to single a single point so this is the quotient map another example if I give you a torus as X and I give you a circle sitting on the torus as A you can form the quotient and this this red circle gets crushed down to a point and the quotient looks like this so this is what's called a pinched torus This is the quotient map. So you can form lots of weird looking spaces this way. Um, and yeah, we'll see much more of this quotient topology as we move on. It's going to be very, very useful construction in what follows.